Hello everybody. Um, I hope uh, uh, the presentation right now in front of all of you. If you're facing any trouble, just let me know, please. So uh, our presentation um, um, titled the Mycorrhiza, the unknown world. So uh, this presentation is, um, uh, as I mentioned, um, three minutes or five minutes ago, um, concerning the uh, basis of mycorrhizal taxonomy and the mycorrhizal application. So uh, uh, this presentation will, will um, uh, discuss eight points, looks like introduction, types of mycorrhizal association, ectomycorrhiza, endomycorrhiza, morphology of um, arbiscular mycorrhizal fungi, Sometimes they said it's arbiscular mycorrhizal fungi. Something. Uh, sometimes they said it's fem uh, vascular arb uh, arbiscular mycorrhiza fungi. Whatever classification of endomycorrhiza, spore-based taxonomy, mycorrhizal application. So um, just um, uh, turn your mobile silent, <laughs> so you can have a more of concentration. So. Um, introduction is just. Uh, um, uh, two point or something like that to shed the light about what is meant by mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza is um, um, meaning fungus root or um, in Arabic it's called uh, alphatriatic gizreya. So it's a kind of symbiotic relationship between uh, fungi and um, uh, plant roots. And it's considered a universal plant fungal symbiosis. It's, it's distributed um, all over the, the world, every plant and um, Certain species and certain families of plants not have mycorrhizal, but uh, the majority uh, already uh, uh, have mycorrhizal. So it's a kind of symbiotic association formed between fungi with roots and exchange of for function as an extended root system. So this, uh, if you uh, if you look at the, the the photo in the uh, in the lower part. You will find you can imagine how how the the the, the plant roots is distributed uh, in the soil and it's covered by mycorrhizal which already help the plant to um, uh, exchange uh, nutrient to, um, mycorrhizal takes the nutrient and give it to the plant and the plant give it to the mycorrhizal the carbohydrate content and it's a kind of uh, relationship it's a symbi symbiotic relationship and it is the most wide uh, spread symbiotic association in nature um, uh, as as we discussed before fungi is one of the most important um, uh, biotic uh, component of the of the ecosystem so mycorrhiza is considered also one of the most widespread symbiotic association in nature so if you look of, uh, for the, uh, the the diagram uh, at the uh, upper part, you will find mycorrhiza in the center, and it's between plant, soil, and the fungus. So, uh, mycorrhiza is connected between plants and soil and fungi in the center of that diagram. So, you should imagine there is a relationship between your soil, your plant, and the endophytic or ecto. Uh, uh, mycorrhizal. So um, uh, it's a kind of relationship depends upon many, uh, many parameters. So at least we have seven types of mycorrhizal association. The first is called ectomycorrhiza and ectomycorrhiza is divided into four sub uh, titles, ectomycorrhiza, ectoendomycorrhiza, Arbitoid mycorrhiza, monotropoid mycorrhiza, and uh, uh, endomycorrhiza. So endomycorrhiza is also divided into three types of uh, uh, mycorrhiza. It's called arbiscular. It is one of the most important for all of us. It's called uh, endomycorrhiza. So um, for for everyone of you, you are interested to study arbiscular mycorrhizal. So um, uh, 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 
uh, ericoid and uh, 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 orchids mycorrhiza it are the three uh, or the, the last three types of uh, mycorrhizal um, uh, endomycorrhizal so we have just seven um, ectomycorrhiza and um, ecto endomycorrhiza arbitoid monotroboid arbiscular ericoid orchids mycorrhiza so, um, uh, based on a classification proposed by um, um, uh, Bill Scott et al. 2005, they said it's just six type. So, there are some some debate uh, debates between um, mycologists uh, uh, around ectoendo, but it, some uh, people uh, consider this another uh, type. So, um, if you go to your left hand, you will find endomycorrhiza so endomycorrhiza is classified into arbiscular mycorrhizal which characterized by uh, uh, vesicle arbiscules arbiscule here is meaning rot like structures or uh, orchid endomycorrhiza which is is, is is containing some structures not like vesicle inside the uh, inside, inside the cortex um, um, ericoid um, um, uh, endomycorrhiza which already uh, containing uh, some coiling of the mycelium inside the, 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 the cortex cell. And after that, we go to ectomycorrhizal. Ectomycorrhizal, it characterized by what we said, heart net. It's a kind of, um, uh, of uh, mycelium which is able to penetrate the root and encasing the root um, um, uh, uh, epidermis and penetrate it uh, up till to cortex. Uh, um, uh, area so heart technique is considered uh, one uh, major character for identification of ectomycorrhizal uh, for uh, uh, arbitoid ectomycorrhizal you will find uh, a coiling in the in the in the region of cortex and uh, in, 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 in the last type is monotroboid you will find something looks like fungal pig inside uh, the, um, uh, the cortex so they are definitely very very clear under uh, microscope uh, you can easily uh, find the ectomycorrhizal and you can just go through um, a ts uh, section of um, um, uh, of the root to uh, determine is it ectomycorrhiza or uh, arbitoid or um, uh, monotroboid so uh, it's it's easy to do that um, so ectomycorrhiza, as I mentioned before, diagnostic feature is heart net. So don't forget its characteristic uh, feature uh, is heart net, and uh, it's char characteristic for many trees in cooler parts of the world. Uh, you can find a lot, a lot of uh, of uh, ascomycota and basidiomycota as ectomycorrhizal. Uh, and uh, if you look at um, uh, photo uh, with symbol D, you will find the heart net is covered the, 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 the external part of the root. And uh, you can notice also fairy ring, um, a, a ring of um, ectomycorrhizal basidiomycota surrounded a type of, uh, of tree um, 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 in color area. So it's a kind of uh, 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 um, uh, a very, very common uh, association in cooler area uh, um, uh, 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 of the world. Um, here um, <laughs> is Amenita muscaria. I collected it in um, Sparta in Greece last year or something like that two years ago. I don't remember. Um, it's a kind of um, uh, ectomycorrhiza and Amenita muscaria knows it's, it's a very um, for us, we said it's a hallucinic. So, um, uh, so, so if you like hallucination, you can enjoy it. Sure. Um, uh, also, here in Romania, one of um, um, ectomycorrhizal um, um, fungi is Elaphomyces, and uh, Elaphomyces is classified as a travel uh, uh, travel fungi uh, uh, associated with pine trees. And um, uh, it's very, very small in comparison with our uh, Trifaz or Trifasia or Trimania in, in Egypt. Here is one of um, 
uh, a type of mycorrhizal association with a, a plant called Heliansimum in, in, in Sidi Barrani on the border area between Egypt and um, Libya. And here um, collected some samples there. So it's a kind of um, uh, hypogenous um, uh, uh, ectomycorrhizal association, sure. So um, uh, the second type is called ectoendomycorrhizal. Uh, it's characteristics by mantle formation of uh, fungal cheese. It's just a, a, a mantle. And after that, um, uh, significant penetration and the colonization uh, takes place in the cortex. Take care, uh, colonization takes place in the cortex area. And uh, in this um, uh, group, um, Basidio and Ascomycetes uh, already uh, recorded, and um, uh, cortex cell contains high coil and they resist for at least a year. If you look at the, uh, the right cross section, you will find fungal hyphae inside the cortex, and they are coiled. And uh, in uh, Bikia and Binus, uh, we have um, two categories of this um, uh, ectomycorrhizal. We said it's ectomycorrhiza in Bikia, and Binus it's called ectoendo. As I mentioned before, there is still uh, some debates about it's ecto or endo or ectoendo, but it's for us, we just interested to study what type of species here. Um, uh, uh, and uh, you will find the mantle and very characteristic uh, of fungal cheese covered the, uh, this part of uh, root. Um, uh, Arbitoid mycorrhiza, it's um, a kind of uh, um, um, uh, ectomycorrhizal and um, uh, it's characterized by uh, um, uh, ectomycorrhizal mantle, uh, and hartignet is similar to uh, the previous group, and epidermal cells are colonized by hyphae that uh, form coils. If you have a look, a close look to this um, right photo, you will find the, uh, the coil in the um, uh, epidermal cell. Uh, so the epidermal cell, uh, with coil is very characteristic feature of uh, of uh, this type of uh, arbitoid uh, mycorrhizal. So uh, very very important for us to um, uh, uh, to notice the uh, uh, characters to identify this group in a good way. So. Um, uh, um, um, High coil uh, sometimes de disintegrate or uh, completely dissolve it, and maybe epidermal cell may be uh, recolonized again. It's, it's, it's happened all the time because some some high fee is uh, disintegrate, and after that it's um, uh, reinfect again um, another epidermal cell, and the major fungal. Uh, Participants are uh, Basidiomycota. So Basidiomycota are the, the, the major uh, fungal component of this group of arbitoid uh, mycorrhizal fungi. So um, uh, monotroba uh, or monotroboid mycorrhizal, it's a kind of mycorrhizal associated with uh, monotroba, and monotroba is Indian bib. We said it's a, it's a, a, a plant, looks like um, or bank in Egypt or something like that. It's a, it's a kind of plant without um, uh, chlorophyll, so uh, it needs to germinate. How it germinate uh, without uh, chlorophyll, so no food. But seed germinate poorly and require external source of carbohydrate provided by fungal symbiont. So sealis or rusiella uh, 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 or bolitus, uh, supported the seeds with uh, carbohydrates. Where this fungi came by carbohydrates, they are already associated with other uh, trees uh, roots, and they got uh, carbohydrates from uh, this tree, and they gave it to uh, uh, to monotroba, and fungus provide link to photosynthetic uh, host. So uh, this fungus is intermediate between the tree and between the monotroba, which already 
uh, non photosynthetic um, uh, plant and it needs a support uh, during its germination. So seeds go to uh, uh, germinate through another uh, ectomycorrhizal fungi, looks like Boletus, Rosella, uh, uh, Rhizobogon, or uh, Celus. And uh, by the way, Celus is recorded um, in, 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 in Sinai uh, in 1979. Uh, uh, by uh, um, uh, Israeli scientist, um, uh, uh, he published something related to seals and how can Bedouin in, in Sinai is uh, used that in, in, in medical uh, medical treatment. So uh, Denin has published something like that related to uh, seals. Uh, uh, Arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, it is our target of today's presentation. It's considered the most common type of mycorrhiza occurring in about 80% of plant species. Most group uh, uh, of plant already forms mycorrhiza, with the exceptions of Barsicaceae uh, and Kinobudiaceae. So we have two big families. Um, um, Barsicase is under uh, Kiriocephaly, and the Kinobudiesi looks like um, uh, Romex, MX, and um, Spanish blend or something like that. So they not form uh, sugar beet, uh, so they don't, don't form at all mycorrhiza. And important rule, it's mineral nutrient uptake, and sometimes protecting ghosting plant against drought and pathogen. So very important to know that is one of the fashion in, 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 in plant physiology uh, to use mycorrhizal fungi uh, to enhance the, uh, the plant uh, against drought and um, uh, as it's considered uh, one of the uh, most um, important uh, potent uh, fungi. But indeed, um, endomycorrhizal fungi are not specific, are not host specific. Uh, ectomycorrhizal fungi are host specific, so you can identify the basidiomycetes or ascomycetes of ectomycorrhizal fungi based on the tree uh, colonized. But here you can use endomycorrhizal isolated from the maize uh, soil uh, to inoculate wheat uh, soil or cucurbit uh, soil, whatever. It's not specific at all. Um, 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 for uh, application of physiology, uh, phys blend physiology application. So um, um, the sex group is a required mycorrhizal uh, fungi uh, um, uh, already uh, this group is, has a true ecto, uh, ectorizal mantle uh, root surface contact is consists of loosely associated hyphae. If you have a look uh, you will find uh, uh, all hyphae is loosely and they cover the root surface. It's give you an indication, um, wrong uh, identification. Um, it's um, ectomycorrhiza, but take care, ectomycorrhiza associated with uh, trees. Uh, but uh, um, inside the cortex cell, you will find hyphal coil, um, uh, coils from uh, hyphal cell. Uh, inside the cortex, and uh, we have some uh, group um, uh, or some uh, genera of ascomycetes, looks like hymenoscites, it's ascomycete, and some uh, dark septate fungi uh, may be uh, uh, doing uh, and classified as erocoid mycorrhizal. Um, um, uh, orchid mycorrhizal, it's a, it's a kind of um, uh, another support for the non-photosynthetic um, uh, orchids, which already uh, 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 need uh, support for uh, growing, looks like monotroboid um, mycorrhizal. So orchid seeds will not germinate unless a fungus infects them. So if the fungus is infected them, it's already uh, uh, the seed got uh, its carbohydrate from the fungal uh, partner, which already uh, connected with another tree uh, and uh, 
uh, you can look at the, the form of uh, plutons inside root cell. It's, it's, it's a kind of hyper coils. It's, it's very, very characteristic if you go and take a section of, um, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, orchid uh, mycorrhizal. So we have seven types uh, of mycorrhizal. Uh, right now, we should uh, concentrate on um, ectomycorrhizal and endomycorrhizal. What is the difference between them? What is the sources of them? How we can identify them? Are they uh, uh, host-specific? Uh, ectomycorrhizal, yes. Uh, endomycorrhizal, uh, uh, especially uh, arbuscular uh, mycorrhizal fungi, not host-specific. So you can use um, uh, endor, um, um, FAM or uh, um, uh, 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 vascular or, uh, arbuscular mycorrhizal to infect other uh, plant without any uh, specificity. So um, uh, sometimes, um, uh, some types of ectomycorrhizal, you can find a big uh, fraud body of Pacidiomycota and also Ascomycota, and you should uh, know that there is a, 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 um, a good field guide. You should try, if, if you're interested to study um, uh, Basidiomycetes, you should have it because it's, a, it's a, a British Mycological uh, Society produced it in, in uh, 1982, and it's considered the Bible for, uh, for, uh, for collecting fungi and how you can examine it, especially Basidiomycetes. And how you can examine it, how you can record it, how you can um, uh, preserve it. It's, it's, it's a great Bible. You can search it on, on, online to, 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 if you're interested to study um, um, Basidiomycetes uh, uh, in a good way. So uh, ectomycorrhizal fungi, uh, if you, you go to study them, and I know Akram maybe said, Ahmed, uh, are we having ectomycorrhizal fungi in Egypt? Yes, we have. Um, um, we have just um, uh, finishing the editing of a uh, new record of ectomycorrhizal uh, fungi in Egypt, and this will publish soon. Um, um, uh, so, yes, we have. Uh, uh, the, we have uh, two plants to compare. If you go to compare between um, uh, ectomycorrhizal and eucalyptus in uh, Kafur in Arabic, and in sonobar so you will find um, two uh, uh, major characters if the the plant is belonging to angiosperm or if the plant is belonging to gymnosperm so angiosperm uh, mycorrhiza are uh, characterized by um, as as we said mantle hyphae hartignet and the hartignet hyphae is already located in the epidermis area, not exceed to hypoderm, not exceed to cortex, never reach to endoderm. But in bion mycorrhiza, it may be reach to uh, uh, hartic hyphae, it may be reach to uh, cortex cell. So um, it's, a, it's a difference uh, under microscope. If you are a good um, uh, mycologist, you can take a, a section and you can easily uh, decided is if it came from eucalyptus, if you don't know, if, if you got a sample, just a root, uh, but if you collect them, it you can easily uh, uh, differentiate between eucalyptus and bind tree. So uh, uh, if we go uh, through uh, how we can identify uh, um, this uh, mycorrhizal, uh, ectomycorrhizal fungi, we should use um, um, some parameters for identification and um, 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 some guys prefer uh, at first to uh, examine the sample when it's fresh and after that he should keep a part of his uh, sample in a dry form uh, for more examination and um, uh, uh, some parameter looks like fungal spore is one uh, uh, important taxonomic criteria uh, size of the fruit body, how it looks, the color. Uh, you just collect your sample from the field and keep it fresh and go directly to photograph a specimen. And by photographing, you should know it's it's a very important step 
to identify this fungus ectomycorrhizal. Um, here we are using just a camera or your mobile camera to take a photo from up uh, uh, side part of the of the fungus, but you should have um, a photo of the uh, upside and from lateral and from um, gills um, uh, very close, and you should use um, a size. Um, meter beside that you can use a ruler you can put your coin uh, uh, egyptian bound metal egyptian bound beside them the sample uh, to take it as a, uh, a comparison and after that you should have uh, uh, what we said uh, spore print as uh, showed in the last um, uh, last part in this uh, right photo a spore print is just you you should cut your uh, stipe, your uh, structure, and put your bilis or the, uh, the spore part on a, a paper and keep it till um, uh, two days or something like that. It will shed its spore in a manner we said it's a spore print. So spore print is very characteristic criteria to identify this fungi. So without a spore print, without good photograph, uh, and without key, and the microscope examination, you can't identify your fungus. It, it is not a color. It's, it's, uh, maybe, uh, as I mentioned before, bad taxonomy can kill you. So if it if if it's a, a big basidium city and you, you need to eat it and eat it, it may be poisonous and kill you. So these are uh, the parameters used for um, uh, identification of ectomycorrhizal uh, association. So. Uh, uh, you need also to uh, doing some microscopic characteristics of fungi. Looks like, is it herbaceous? Is it growing uh, above soil uh, surface or it herbaceous under soil surface? Uh, what about the cab? Uh, size of cab, shape of cab, uh, color of cab, texture of cab. Uh, how the hymenium looks like? How the stipe? Uh, or stalk uh, uh, size, uh, shape, and uh, what about the, the the base? What about if it if it's there a universal vial or uh, uh, something looks like um, uh, also a vulva? Um, you should know everything of these criteria to identify your fungus. And to the to the right, you will find uh, different shapes of uh, mushroom cab if it's flat or convex. Uh, or conical or cylindrical looks like um, uh, cobrinus, uh, uh, which growing looks like um, cylindrical uh, at the beginning, uh, or can be nullate or different forms. You should know them because if you know them well, you can describe them and you can uh, record your data in a good way. And after that, easy, you can go through the, the key to get the species or even the, the genus. So. Um, uh, also, uh, what about the cab uh, surface and its margin? So you can find uh, the first one is called smooth and entire. So the cab surface is completely smooth and the surface is entire without any undulation or wavy looks like the second uh, one or crenate with, with tooth or, or something like that. So all these parameters, you should know it. You should know the, 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 the expression in uh, in um, in a good way uh, to identify it, you should know that the difference between cube and triangular. So, if you have this uh, definition with you, it's easy to describe your fungus easily. Also, how uh, how looks uh, looks like the cab margin if it plain and curved, uh, enrolled, whatever. So you should read this uh, terminology and train yourself to identify it directly in the field. If you cannot identify it in, 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 in the field, you can take this um, uh, photos and print it with you to start to compare between the fungus in the field and to write something about it. So the uh, mushroom caps, and uh, it's a very, very uh, taxonomic criteria for identification of ectomycorrhizal. Also, how the attachment of the stem or stalk or stipe with the, with the cab, is it free or it's uh, adenate or sinuate with different forms? Also, how looks your uh, gels? 
gills under um, uh, which already uh, the lower part of the cab how it looks like it's it's crowded or uh, distant away from each other and you can see that by your spore printing so it's easy to determine that how can uh, the gill margin is already uh, appear it's it's serrate so gills will be located on the uh, lower part of the bilious so gills here is uh, uh, serrate it looks like um, uh, uh, tiny uh, thesis so uh, this terminology very 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 important to all of you to take a step for uh, uh, right identification of uh, basetiomycetes so without them you can't uh, identify ectomycorrhizal uh, fungi at all so on the other hand um, how looks like the, the stipe or the uh, the stalk it's uh, equal it's very equal or it's tapering to the lower part or tapering to apex or clavate shape blah 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 so all of these are taxonomic criteria very important taxonomic criteria is it there is have a annulus and the vulva yes if, if it have a membranous annu uh, 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 annulus if you remember what we already have been uh, studied in first year of uh, uh, microbiology or botany and um, uh, even uh, 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 systematic botany course a cross section or vertical section in mushroom so uh, 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 you will you you will remember the structure it's just a cab or uh, annulus and vulva and so uh, these structures are very important for all of us to identify this um, uh, type of ectomycorrhizal also um, as I, I i talked before uh, the gill uh, gill margin so uh, after that you should take sections and your section is should be very very important to examine under your microscope you should take a section uh, from your um, uh, bilious uh, um, from your uh, stipe uh, your gills and examine that um, and your section should be uh, sometimes is tangential and sometimes is vertical um, uh, um, to uh, uh, determine the uh, microscopic structures the size of uh, of uh, fungal cell and the, the size of spores so it's very important to do that under microscope show. so um, in comparison between fungus um, mushroom fungus and the travels travels is closed so you, you need to take a cross section to compare between as a glib structure or something like uh, beridium and um, if it um, uh, contains uh, columella tissue and um, also as i mentioned something is very important is, is this bore uh, brent uh, you should have uh, some slides of uh, of your um, of your uh, specimen uh, maybe uh, to preserve it at semi um, uh, semi permanent uh, technique by using uh, glycerin jelly or something like that to preserve it for four, one year or something like that so uh, also uh, how many spore on uh, on basidia if it four if it two uh, uh, how they are floating during your uh, preparation of your uh, temporary slide uh, uh, if it um, uh give you an indication uh, from uh, side view or terminal view you should take a measurement uh, of the of the spore uh, uh, including the spore uh, first and measuring the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the part because it's if you look at a and look at b uh, part of this you will find a, a very different between the beginning of the uh, of the spore here and uh, the measurement of your measure measurement so you will should know you uh, should know that is you sh you should take many many measurement uh, either for the total 
or the lower part of the spore or circular part of the spore. So it's very important to know how you can measure that. Uh, also, uh, 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 if we go uh, to uh, another very important parameter, what is the shape of your uh, your passetial spore? Is it globose? Is it ellipsoid? Is it ovoid? Um, oblong? Uh, cylindrical? You remember uh, uh, the terminology of a spore, especially in, in the presentation of how you can identify a spragellus, as example. So you can use this terminology to describe your uh, uh, your passidio spore. Uh, also, spore structure, um, how it uh, looks like. Is it um, uh, uh, smooth? It's ornamented. That, uh, what about the presporium, exosporium, endosporium, the layer of a spore? It's a very, very characteristic um, uh, parameters. Uh, also, what about the spore uh, ornamentation? Uh, spore ornamentation, is it smooth? Is it varicose? Is it echinoidate or spiny? Uh, uh, reticulate looks like um, a net or uh, reticulum. So all of these characters, you should record it uh, during your examination of your sample. And for more, um, uh, um, uh, identification uh, procedures you can check uh, the, uh, uh, um, the, the the book concerning collection and identification of uh, macrobasidiomycetes uh, produced by uh, british mycological association you can find it free uh, of a charge online so um, uh, it's easy to um, to download it and read it well so sometimes we said that Ectomycorrhizal is sometimes of belonging to ascomycota. So if it's belonging to ascomycota, how, how how it looks like? It's if it uh, 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 a it's uh, growing uh, up uh, the, 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 the the ground surface or underground surface. So if it uh, above ground surface, you can find it looks like cup shape. Uh, uh, in ground uh, underground surface, it looks like Travel, uh, travels looks like it looks like potato. So you should cut it and go through uh, the tissue to see the, the shape of ascus and ascospores. And you can find something of my work is published related to uh, travels and how many travels species are recorded in Egypt. I because I'm I'm already doing a survey uh, after the great survey um, published by uh, our friend uh, Giovanni Bassioni, uh, Bassioni in um, 1990 maybe. Uh, uh, so I'm doing in 2012 uh, a, a good um, uh, survey and also you can find uh, uh, in my YouTube channel a trip to collect um, uh, um, travels from Sidi Barrani so you can uh, have a look on on this movie so um, what about uh, what we said basidia so basidia is a very very a characteristic feature of uh, basidium mycota. Um, we have two uh, different types of uh, basidia. Sometimes we said it's a fragmo basidium, and it's, it's a very characteristic feature of uh, fragmo basidium mycetes. Looks like um, uh, rust diseases, smut diseases, and we have a holo basidium. It's, it's called um, um, for a class called holo basidium mycetes, um, and the, the, the shape of basidium. Is very characteristic feature. It's a taxonomic um, criteria. Looks like uh, dacromyces, and uh, uh, you can you can notice that is um, uh, by two uh, arm or something like that. And you can find also by cobrinus or, or, or agaricus, it's just four teeth or something like that. So it basidia type is very uh, characteristic feature. Also. Uh, what about the, the different groups of these? Uh, okay, you can go to uh, different groups and you can find something looks like um, uh, like Oberdelis or what we said, buff pole. It's just, uh, it, it just release its spore, looks like um, uh, um, um, uh, a smoke, so shooting it. Um, uh, and you can find it easily on, uh, on internet. Uh, something looks like puff pool and I, I will put for all of you in um, 
uh, after my presentation uh, above all um, one of the biggest one i have been found in and uh, and and i have been uh, take a photo with it in, in usa during my visit to uh, minnesota university so um, uh, these groups are characterized by uh, a different type of uh, fraud body how it looks so it's a, a, a taxonomic uh, parameter for uh, everyone if you go through it's polyborelis fungus, it looks like Ganoderma, whatever. Here is something very, very uh, specific, and you should know what about the columella if if it uh, the structure is uh, go through the fruit body or it's uh, percurrent columella if it uh, if it uh, a cross section of travel like uh, fungi. Because it's a, a travel-like fungi. Sometimes it's a circular. It looks like potato. It's under uh, underground, so you need to take a section on it, and you can describe um, the type of columella, truncate, whatever uh, the shape of. Uh, so, right now we have different um, parameters uh, easily distinguished: ectomycorrhiza and endomycorrhiza so ectomycorrhiza is a type of mycorrhizal association which fungal hyphae don't penetrate the cortical cell of the plant root it's a play on the epidermal uh, sub-epidermal tissue endomycorrhizal type of mycorrhizal association in which fungal hyphae penetrate the cortical cell of the plant root and the form vesicles and arbuscles so there are two uh, two uh, parameters to uh, recognize it, ecto or endo. In abundance, about 4% of um, uh, or 5% world um, wide is just ectomycorrhizal. For endomycorrhizal, more than 80%. Hyphal uh, mantle, it's produce a hyphal mantle, don't produce hyphal mantle in endomycorrhiza. Heart net produced in endomycorrhiza, not produced are biscules and vesicle uh, completely absent in ectomycorrhizal present in endomycorrhizal the fungi involved is ascomycota and pasidiomycota in endomycorrhizal it's glomeromycota it's which already already transferred from order glomelis in zygomycota and introduced as uh, phylum um, glomeromycota in 2000 so it's big phylum right now uh, penetration into cortical cell don't penetrate cortical cell penetrate cortical cell uh, balance uh, conifers looks like uh, binus cedrus uh, and deciduous non-coniferous like oak beech and birch and uh, about um, uh, in endomycorrhiza about um, 85 percentage of uh, vascular plant including orchids shrubs and foliage uh, foliage plant, nuts, trees um, um, already infected by uh, endomycorrhiza uh, away from um, Kiriocephaly and Kino Budiesi, as I mentioned uh, before. So, right now is endomycorrhiza. Sometimes they said arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, uh, sometimes they said it, uh, vesicular arbuscular uh, mycorrhizal fungi so you can find it endomycorrhiza sometimes you can find it amf sometimes you can find it fam so uh, as we said it's occurring about 90 percentage of plant species excluded these two uh, families and uh, if you go through it you, you will find something uh, very very specific looks like uh, 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 hyphae absorptive hyphae and spore uh, this is uh, very common in, 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 in soil so you can easily uh, isolate it from soil by saving technique and wet technique and uh, inside the root it will be turned into uh, hyphae arbuscles and vesicles so vesicles is very very uh, characteristic inside root here uh, with the letter v and uh, hyphae inside and with uh, Arbuscules, it looks like um, um, shrubby structure. So, uh, this is the main feature of um, uh, um, AMF. So, the morphology is, um, uh, of the AMF is characterized by 
many parameters, as I mentioned before in that slide, in the previous slides, looks like extra radical mycelium. Uh, what about the, uh, this uh, extra radical mycelium or hyphae? Uh, first of all, it is not septated because it's belonging before to zygomycota, so it is, it is not uh, septated at all. Uh, the, the, the mycelium is just an important function to uptake and translocate a mineral nutrient uh, um, uh, to the fungus. Uh, and uh, it's give a highly branched nature of hyphae, which act as extended root system for the trees or for the plant. So uh, if the plant is growing in a very poor um, soil, the fungus is doing um, um, a mission of uh, a secondary root for it and root it. So it's able to grow away from uh, that um, plant to collect uh, minerals for it. Uh, so, uh, 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 this hyphae is originated from uh, established hyphae network. It came from network or just germinating uh, uh, spores. So uh, it's very characterized. And as I mentioned uh, before, it's lake septa, non septate, one of many uh, um, taxonomic criteria. When you go to examine your uh, extra radical or hyphae of uh, FAM uh, or AMF, it's, it should be without septa. Uh, Spore structures uh, are uh, act as reserve and propagation organs, sure, and it's uh, very, very important for us as a taxonomist because it's, we are uh, identify species based on spore size, color, uh, layers. So um, uh, uh, fungal spores such as size, uh, color, wall layers, and the feature of germination of hyphae, it germinates uh, um, from apical or sub uh, or lateral or uh, uh, what about the structure uh, under the, the spore? Is it pulpous or normal? So we use these parameters to identify uh, taxa of mycorrhiza. Uh, so uh, 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 under favorable condition, sure, its spore is growing directly to give mycelium and the mycelium to penetrate the root. But in bad condition or um, uh, unfavorable condition, uh, it's remaining as a spore. At, uh, uh, cannot germinate if it's bad condition. So uh, when it germinated, give germ tube. And here is a photo which is good, give you the the uh, imagination of how the spore is uh, uh, of glomus um, is growing or attaching to the. Uh, it's hyphae, um, very, very clear to give you uh, imagination of uh, a spore and the hyphae. And you should notice that its hyphae is non septated. Hyphae is non septated. So it's a very, very characteristic, uh, characteristic features of endomycorrhiza in comparison with the ectomycorrhiza, because it's ectomycorrhiza. It contains basidiomycota, and the basidiomycota is septated and characterized by dully bore septum, and ascomycota is septated and characterized by simple uh, bore with voronum bodies. So it's a very, very easy for us to recognize that. So um, uh, th uh, this mycelium also, it's connected the soil mycelium and consists of hyphae uh, uh, and arbuscles, and you should know the hyphae in uh, endomycorrhizal uh, are two types, uh, arm type and baris type, and they are uh, very, very uh, characteristics under microscope. If you take a section, you can recognize arm type from baris type because it's um, uh, arm type is um, um, uh, inter, um, intercellular hyphae, uh, and baris type is intracellular hyphae, one beside, uh, one uh, inside the cell, it's baris type, and one between cell and the uh, intercellular spaces, uh, and it's con it's formed between cortical cells, and have intercellular uh, arbuscles uh, in comparison with uh, berries type. So here is a comparison. So you can you can notice that it's arm type is is the, is the hyphae between between uh, the cell. It's not uh, been treated. Uh, the hyphae not been treated the cell at all, it's just um, running between uh, uh, the cell. Uh, 
in, in the intercellular spaces and send its uh, arbuscles inside the cell. Uh, Barrett's type, no, it's penetrate and giving a structure inside the cell. So it's easily to compare between them under microscope using differential um, uh, stains um, uh, used for that, looks like um, uh, Triban Blue or something like that. Um, Arbuscular structures uh, also are very, very characterized by, um, as we mentioned before, if it, uh, this arbuscles uh, belonging to arm type um, hyphae, it will be looks like uh, uh, a small tree. If it uh, belonging to uh, baris type, it's just a coil, uh, a complex coil inside the cell. So uh, from the arbuscles, you can say it's uh, arm or baris type. Uh, and um, uh, it's completed its life cycle uh, from uh, uh, two and a half days up to four days uh, um, um, uh, to doing um, uh, what we said, uh, neutron exchange. So one of the most important thing for endomycorrhizal fungi is the vesicles. Vesicle is uh, the shape of it, the size of it, the color of it, it depends upon the species. If it gigaspora, if it uh, aculospora, if it uh, glomus, paraglomus, whatever, but it contains large amount of lipids. Triglyceride are most common on the majority of them. Uh, also, it act as propagules for some species of uh, um, um, uh, AM fungi. Uh, they are developable themselves, as as you already see in this um, section. Uh, stained by uh, Triban Blue, and um, uh, uh, sometimes it's able to uh, enlarge to occupy the entire volume of the cell. So uh, some uh, researcher considers uh, uh, endomycorrhizal fungi is a good way to uh, protect the plant against nematoda because it's if this. Um, uh, Vesicle is already uh, uh, replaced the entire volume or occupy the entire volume of the cell. How can nematoda is, is enter to the cell? So they consider it one way to control um, uh, plant uh, uh, against nematoda. Also, here is uh, uh, Giovanetti in 2000 is given. Um, uh, a life cycle of uh, of um, arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, and he classified it into two parts: uh, a symbiotic stage, which already been in, in, in the soil, and uh, pre-symbiotic stage before entering, and symbiotic stage uh, two, two three parts, sorry, uh, and uh, symbiotic stage which already inside the plant. So if the spore is started from here and uh, germinating, and give it mycelium, and the mycelium already uh, able to host recognition and uh, forming uh, infection structures uh, which go on through, uh, to infect the um, epidermal cell and um, uh, sub-epidermal layers and after that able to colonize and fill the cell um, um, type so it's between uh, three stages a symbiotic in soil a pre-symbiotic stage and finally a symbiotic stage inside the plant so how we can classify um, AMF? Um, it belongs to phylum Glomeromycota. As we said, it's uh, 2001. It's uh, not anymore belonging to Zygomycota. So it's a, a, a certain phylum right now in kingdom fungi, kingdom true fungi, okay? U fungi. So Glomeromycota is um, a, a phylum in um, uh, uh, true fungi. Uh, uh, another um, uh, uh, taxonomic criteria is hyphal attachment and the mode of spore formation are the mainly used to distinguish families. We are using this character to distinguish how many families belonging to uh, Glomeromycota. Recent study showed it's maybe 15 families right now. So 15 families is, is, is is recent classification of Glomeromycota. Species identification uh, is based on the substructures of the spore wall. So you should know how is the spore wall looks like, the color, how many layers, one or two, 
uh, or three, it's, uh, it's um, uh, smooth, it's scablishered. So, so you should know how how uh, how your uh, uh, spore wall um, um, layer number. It's layer number one or layer number two or layer number three. So it's a kind of uh, uh, magnificent um, criterion to identify your species uh, using your microscope. Um, uh, and also, as I mentioned on, on my last presentation, we have a good uh, mycorrhizal taxonomist in Egypt. Uh, her name is Niveen Alam Nafadi in Asyut University. She is a she is a good scientist studying um, um, uh, taxonomy of mycorrhizal in Egypt, uh, mycorrhiza in Egypt, and by both uh, phenotypic uh, using light microscope, uh, sim microscope, tim microscope, and even by molecular too. So, uh, so phylum uh, Glomerulomycota uh, is classified to um, in this um, figure into about 14 um, uh, family. And if you go through them, you will find uh, what I already mentioned in the previous studies about how the, the spore is formed, how the sub subtending hyphae is already attached to the spore. Is it from right? Is it for, um, from a lateral view? Is it from uh, top view? So, uh, uh, so it's a taxonomic criteria. So you can find here in Bara Glomeraceae, it's just came. Uh, uh, from uh, 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 the spores form it terminally. Uh, so uh, this is a kind of recent taxonomy and phylogenetic tree. You can find it easily uh, according to uh, Will et al. Uh, 2008. Here also you can find the classification again uh, for um, 15 family of, um, of uh, Glomerulomycota if you are interested to know as one of the, our major problem during um, uh, reviewing papers concerning um, mycorrhiza, people not interested to even to check the name they used because it's majority of um, the, of researcher used to buy um, uh, some mycorrhiza from outside the country and they just um, uh, infecting uh, onion roots to uh, enumerate it and then after that it releases it in soil. And they are not interested even to write um, uh, about the taxonomy, about the right name right now. Is it Colomus or right, to change it to Baraglomus, whatever. So uh, you uh, should bear in your mind your uh, taxon uh, uh, before publication should be checked against um, uh, Index Fangorum uh, database uh, or Mycobank uh, to know is it still valid name or uh, synonym right now. Uh, so spore-based taxonomy is one um, uh, important thing for us to know how our spore is completely developed. Uh, uh, if it uh, developed looks like Scytellospora and Gigaspora from a bulbous subtending hyphae or uh, from a narrow uh, flaring hyphae looks like um, uh, Glomus. Uh, and after that, how spore becomes a soil or detached from the sporophyous, uh, uh, sporophyous uh, secule. So it's a very, very uh, taxonomic uh, criterion should be used for identification. Also, uh, a spore arrangement, if it uh, can be uh, produced singly or in uh, aggregation, this aggregation is called a sporocarb. Sometimes we can find a, a large size of a spore together and we said it's a sporocarb. So uh, what about the spore shape? If it uh, globose, subglobose, oval, oblong, uh, how it's subtending hyphae is a beer under microscope. If it bulbous, is it whatever. So these are very important criteria. So here, if it, your spore arrangement is single or uh, in a spore, as uh, 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 structure or um, uh, collection of spore, how it, the shape of it, how the spore size, how the spore development, if it's uh, lateral, it's uh, terminal, uh, if it uh, detached from the the sporophorous tissue or it's 
So it's a very, very important criteria. And you can find all of this information on, on BAM website. So it's easy for you. And right now, how we can go to um, uh, doing spore extraction of, um, of mycorrhiza. Spore, uh, spore um, uh, extraction of mycorrhiza is used what we said. It's uh, wet sieving and either we can use the cross centrifugation method. So uh, 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 just a series of sieves um, you start by uh, uh, a large uh, mesh size up to very very narrow mesh size which may be end by 30 micrometer or, or 50 micrometer and use this series to pass your uh, spore uh, suspension you just collect um, uh, a soil sample maybe one kilogram or two kilograms and you just soaking it in water and just keeping um, uh, uh, agitation or rotation of uh, of your uh, soil with water and after that you go to uh, extract uh, them so you will catch a different um, uh, different uh, uh, spore sizes uh, on uh, on each sieve so after that you can wash them carefully and um, collect them to examine under microscope or you can just take them all and use a uh, so cross gradient uh, technique uh, uh, direct by uh, using 50% um, uh, uh, sucrose sometimes you can use uh, 40 to 60 uh, sucrose um, uh, to uh, to uh, separate um, uh, the spores based on their size and later on you can uh, discard the pellet which already uh, um, 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 after centrifugation at 2000 rpm so it's very easy to do that so spore size is one of the major criteria and we are using um, um, uh, uh, different keys uh, but we know that it may be range between uh, 20 uh, micron up to uh, 1000 micron so it's some something of uh, some some species are very small some species are very uh, big and it's called maybe called giga spore uh, uh, it's a it's a genus named after its size so uh, spore color also you remember my uh, presentation concerning asparagus and you should uh, use uh, color uh, book uh, to identify your uh, your uh, spore color because it's, it's not all of them is white or brown or blah 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 also uh, spore ornamentation if it uh, reticulate spine babylate whatever you should have uh, all this uh, information in your uh, book so uh, a color chart for uh, goluminium fungi you should have it in your um, uh, uh, book uh, to uh, identify this type of um, uh, uh, mycorrhiza uh, how it um, it looks like if it glomus and the glomus uh, is, um, is 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 um, the, the spore is developed uh, terminally how it, it looks like gigaspora and the scleotillospora is, is, is developed from uh, bulbous structures how many layers of the wall one or two or three whatever so it's a very very important criteria to do that and um, I, I wonder because I'm, I'm read all the time some work published from Egyptian uh, scientists it's just uh, it's just a copy and based off from from different other papers uh, and they never give you a, a way they describe their species. They said um, uh, a sample were collected and we isolated the uh, glomus uh, musea and blah, 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 blah. And no photo to uh, support their result. How it comes? So it's, it's a kind of fake of identification maybe. So, uh, uh, so you should take uh, 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 and bear in your mind that is um, glomus as example is uh, run between um, uh, white hairline up to uh, black some some species so uh, aculospora uh, um, uh, gigaspora whatever so you will have uh, have a chart looks like that in your laboratory beside your microscope and you can um, start to oh my god this fungus is really oh this color it may be glomus 
And after that, if you if if you define it as glomus, you should have the recent keys of the glomus. Okay, because it's taxonomist without recent key is is equal nothing. Also, uh, the shape of uh, your spore, if it uh, globose, subglobose, uh, uh, clavate, whatever, you will have this um, uh, 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 this uh, chart of range of shapes uh, of a spore of taxa of all uh, V. So finally, we will go to the last section of this uh, presentation: how we can talk about mycoapply, how we can use mycorrhizal uh, endomycorrhizal fungi in different application. Um, uh, so don't forget that is um, um, uh, endomycorrhizal fungi is uh, completely used uh, in a symbiotic relationship to uh, absorb nutrients, looks like phosphorus, nitrogen from the soil and give it to the plant and got uh, in, uh, in, in a reverse way sugars from the plant. So it's a, a kind of uh, beneficial relationship, uh, give and take. So um, uh, uh, so how we, we uh, said, is there any direct and indirect effect of uh, uh, arbiscular mycorrhizal fungi on group productivity? Yes, we have uh, uh, already a direct effect and uh, indirect effect. So uh, if you go to direct effect, you will find the stimulation of nutrient equations. So uh, uh, mycorrhiza is able to collect uh, phosphorus, nitrogen, copper, uh, ferrous, zinc, and give it to the plant. And um, also, um, uh, it, it supports the plant against uh, drought resistance because it's, it's already uh, some of them physical is is completely filled the, the cell, so uh, it uh, doing a, a great job. Uh, also, heavy metal resistance because it's um, mycorrhizal is able to uh, accumulate heavy metals easily, so it prevent. Um, uh, uh, blend from uh, harmful effect of heavy metal. Uh, uh, also, if it uh, makes the plant is, uh, is uh, uh, very, very uh, tolerate uh, the hot or cold weather. So indirect effect, it's uh, weed suppression because it's, it's how it supports the plant with weed suppression because it's mycorrhizal, okay, uh, is, is give it uh, for the, the plant uh, another uh, way to uh, distribute and to uh, uh, dominate uh, over the other plant by uh, giving it uh, a kind of secondary uh, rootlets as it's um, uh, mycorrhiza is considered uh, as a secondary uh, uh, um, uh, rootlets for it. It's stimulation of nitrogen fixation. Um, and um, uh, I should uh, uh, say here that is uh, uh, there is a, 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 a something said it's if a bacteria or a symbiotic bacteria is uh, uh, looks like a nodulous, uh, nodulating root of leguminous plant, um, mycorrhizal cannot go inside the root if it bacteria uh, rhizobacteria is inside the root, but it's 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 a completely uh, wrong idea. Because it's uh, nafadi uh, nivin is is already uh, provided um, uh, a study by uh, uh, scanning electron microscope and um, uh, transmission electron microscope to prove that as both of them already been treated the cell. So right now is mycorrhiza and um, rhizobacteria is working together inside the root, not one to prevent the other. So also it gives the plant power to uh, suppression of some plant pathogen or stimulation of soil biological activity and increase soil carbon storage because it's, you know, it's a kind of uh, uh, skeletal and uh, carbon uh, structures of mycorrhiza. So uh, also uh, mycorrhiza catch the nutrient. So a way for leaching this nutrient is completely stopped because it's, if mycorrhiza is catches a nutrient and give it to the plant, so no way for uh, that. So um, here is a summary for what already mentioned before. It's uh, uh, support the plant against the drought, salt, heavy metals, increase efficacy of nitrogen fixation, increase overall absorption, increase mobilization of uh, phosphorus, um, nitrogen, copper, zinc, uh, increase tolerance of root pathogen, whatever, it's just um, a figure. So uh, 
uh, also uh, you should bear in your mind that is mycorrhizal symbiosis and arbusculars is doing all its uh, way to protect the plant against different uh, uh, harmful parameters uh, and also it's improved water use uh, eff efficiency so um, um, according to young et al uh, 2015 here is that something is uh, a modified um, uh, figure uh, adopted by our uh, our friend dr hani lachin and it's it's called um, uh, how uh, these um, mycorrhizal fungi able to um, uh, help uh, tree and plant so it's just a, a, a secondary metabolism or signaling molecules it's maybe uh, uh, through hormones or increase photosynthetic by uh, higher chlorophyll content uh, higher gas exchange capacity protect uh, uh, photosystem 2 reaction center um, uh, different physiological uh, effect is uh, carried by um, um, AMF supporting the plant to be uh, against um, uh, harmful, uh, harmful effect even in these days which already all of us is suffering from climate change so you can go to our one of our published work in Blue Swan uh, Professor Abdul Ghaffar Abu Saud and Professor Niveen Alam Nafadi and myself Concerning our uh, arbuscular mycorrhizal strategy for zinc microremediation, how can um, 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 mycorrhizal fungi is doing a kind of remediation uh, and dimension translocation to shoots and the grains in wheat? How this mycorrhizal fungi native uh, species already isolated um, by us? Uh, how it can already uh, prevent uh, translocation of uh, uh, high concentration of zinc? Uh, from uh, roots to shoot at the grains in in wheat you can find it free of a charge on uh, and online for uh, for reading if you're interested it's 2017 maybe uh, another uh, f figures is just to give you how can uh, uh, association between mycorrhizal fungi is doing um, heat tolerance or cold uh, tolerance it's just give you how can uh, 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 mycorrhizal fungi help the plant in that uh, way how can they enhance osmo uh, osmotic adjustment gas exchange capacity and uh, how can effectiveness of uh, photochemistry of photosystem 2 and the nutrient uptake all of these uh, physiological criteria is enhanced uh, if the plant uh, already has a, uh, a mycorrhiza also uh, what about uh, uh, the abiotic stress, uh, increased salinity and drought uh, to uh, tolerance? How can uh, the mycorrhizal association support the plant? Uh, how it can uh, increase uh, nitrate assimilation? How can uh, improve the antioxidant defense system? How can it increase the accumulation of organic acid, looks like oxalic acid, fumaric acid, malic acid, and citric acid? All of these parameters, all of these criteria are very, very important to put it in your mind concerning uh, mycorrhizal fungi and plant physiology. I am not plant physiologist. I'm just give a hint about that, but uh, I'm taxonomist. So conclusion, according to Jacot et al. Uh, 2017, here is the comparison between non-colonization by uh, mycorrhiza and the colonization by mycorrhiza so you will find uh, a difference completely between both of them uh, phosphate uh, transfer will take place by uh, uh, root hairs there it will be take place by uh, mycorrhiza all the nutrient will take place uh, transformation um, uh, transportation by uh, mycorrhiza it's uh, give a local resistance to root pathogen increase resistant to heavy metal toxicity uh, and uh, uh, it, it, this this um, uh, this area is called a phosphate depletion zone and the phosphate is not uh, close to the root who will transfer it to the root supposed to be mycorrhiza so mycorrhiza just carrier 
to support that and catch all nutrients from uh, uh, far, uh, far away to deliver it in a gentle way to um, uh, micro uh, to uh, higher blend. So it's very important to uh, to bear that in your mind. So finally, uh, let me say, if we know what it was we were doing, it would not be called research, would it? As Albert Einstein said. So thank you all. And this photo is with my two colleagues. One of uh, one uh, is uh, um, um, David Mentor to the uh, right uh, with glasses, and he is a, a godfather of uh, fungal conservation worldwide. And he is a president and founder of uh, International Society for Fungal Conservation. And uh, Professor um, uh, Paul Cannon, he is a British ascomycet um, uh, prominent mycologist. Thank you all, and I will be ready after two minutes for your question uh, online. Thank you again, and see you again after uh, two minutes, inshallah.